Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Ecuador Insider Podcast. I'm Jesse Bayer, joined as always by my business partner, Darnell Dunn. We have a great guest for you uh, tonight, which we'll get to momentarily. Uh, we are Abundant Living Ecuador. You can, of course, contact us or find us on our website, abequador.com, 800 number from the US and Canada, 888-999-0948, and uh, info at abequador.com is our email. Um, we are really excited about tonight's show. Uh, Francisco Aguilar is joining us from Thune Financial Advisors, and they sort of specialize in a lot of stuff that our listeners um, either are interested in or should be interested in. I think it's a topic that um, many of us are sort of undereducated in, and that is uh, financial planning, tax planning, uh, coordinating investments overseas with uh, your country of origin, etc. So we will um, you know, dive into a lot of expat-related financial issues tonight, um, including investing. So definitely um, awesome to have Francisco on the show. Um, so again, uh, you know, Darnell is here with me, of course, from Cuenca. Francisco is coming to us from the States in, uh, in Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin, I believe, correct? Yep. And um, so I'm just going to uh, run through Francisco's bio so you guys can get a sense of who he is. Um, and then allow you, Francisco, to give a little bit of an introduction to you know your company and what you guys do, and uh, and then we can get started. Um, so just pulling uh, pulling Francisco's bio here right off of uh, their website, which is thunefinancial.com. That's T H U N financial.com. Francisco joins Thune, Fina uh, Thune Financial from an international background, having grown up in South America, primarily Ecuador, and been educated in the United States. Previously an investment analyst intern with Thune Financial, Francisco also has a well-rounded academic and professional background in investing and finance for both individual and institutional clients. His experience includes serving as a financial analyst for, uh, per, forgive the pronunciation here, Toc Tocqueville, uh, as Tocqueville. say again. Tocqueville, Tocqueville uh, Asset Management, a New York-based institutional and private wealth management firm, and as a student portfolio manager for the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh Endowment. Francisco returns to Thune after teaching economics at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater while completing research on implied volatility and portfolio returns. Francisco is a graduate of the University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin Oshkosh, uh, a BBA in finance and economics, and the University of Wisconsin Whitewater uh, an MS in economics. He is fluent in English and Spanish. So Darnell, Francisco, thank you both so much for uh, being here tonight. Um, Francisco, if you could maybe give our listeners a quick uh, introduction to you know your company and what you guys do, and then we can kind of dive right in, dive right into the topics. Sure. Uh, thank you for for having me. Um, so the name of our company is Tune Financial Advisors. Uh, we're based in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, we focus primarily in on Americans abroad. Uh, that's about eighty-five percent of our clients are U.S. expats that live outside the United States. And the company was founded in 2008 um, by David Kinsey. He was an expat himself, and he saw the need of uh, a financial planning firm that the primary fo focus is um, helping U.S. citizens with the, you know, the investing, making sure they are uh, compliant with the U.S. tax code because the U.S. is citizenship-based tax taxation, as you guys know. So there's a lot of things that go into place when a U.S. citizen that lives outside the United States has to think, uh, has to think when it comes to retirement. So it's not only, you know, the assets in the United States and the assets abroad, but also how the cross-border tax issues um, relate and intertwine between each other and how um, the different tax treaties between countries, uh, things such as tax credits, uh, when to sell, when to sell, when to sell, when to buy certain um, certain positions to take account capital gains and deferred taxes, things like um, when to, you know, when to take advantage of different retirement accounts or different uh, tax accounts, which is a brokerage and joint accounts and whatnot. 
Uh, another thing that we have uh, that we work on is clients that are um, U.S. citizens, but also married with resident aliens or non-resident aliens, and how they um, they plan for retirement and how they uh, focus on estate planning. When so that's the main things uh, we do on an everyday basis. Um, I would say the majority of our clients, uh, maybe 90% of them, are in the UK, Germany, and Switzerland. And um, so now we're trying to expand a little bit more. So that's why I was uh, looking into uh, South America, knowing that a lot of US citizens are thinking about retirement in Ecuador and Panama and Colombia and places like that. So that's how I heard it by you guys. And um, basically, that's a little bit about, about what we do here at Tune Financial. Very good. Um, Darnell, you have a question you want to jump right in, or should I get started? Uh, you know what? You, you go first. Uh, I have a, a couple of ones that I want to follow up with. Sure. Um, so then let's just start. You know, obviously, this is, there's a lot of meat here. Um, there's, you know, there's way more, of course, in all, all aspects of uh, sort of expat financial planning than we can cover in an hour. Um, so let's maybe start broad and then maybe dive into some specifics. But so what maybe, maybe more broadly speaking, and then we can kind of pick up on some of those topics that you may think are most important for the people listening to the show. But what are, you know, what are the sort of the broad stroke elements um, that sort of the cross border, you know, somebody who's trying to plan their financial future or financial life out and there's cross-border issues whether that's living overseas or investing overseas what are some of the challenges or some of the sort of broad stroke um, issues that people need to be thinking about and planning for and then maybe we can jump into some of those specifics uh, sure so uh, if you are a uh, an, if, you're, if you're an American I would say the main um, things that people don't think about it's the fact that FATCA already went into place. So, you know, if you were if you were an American living abroad 10 or 20 years ago, um, usually they didn't pay too much attention to being compliant and making sure that the, uh, they are being, um, they are reporting things correctly. Uh, but nowadays, you know, the U.S. is really, um, Making sure that those things are are being in place and that uh, foreign banks are reporting the the, the the assets of Americans worldwide. So, for example, one of the things that many many U.S. citizens don't think about when they retire is uh, what is called PFIX, which is uh, passive foreign investment companies, and that's that's uh, that's really a tax nightmare for U.S. citizens, and that's that involves mainly mutual funds that are registered outside the United States. So any, any, any investment, pretty much, even pensions um, that are registered outside the United States are very punitively taxed if you are a U.S. citizen. So um, I guess not to go into too much detail, uh, for example, if you have a, a foreign mutual fund registered in, in Luxembourg or in Frankfurt, um, you would have to uh, have what it called, what's called mark-to-market accounting. So every year you have to report all the gains, all the all the uh, all the transactions for every single uh, position and, and asset you have in that account. So uh, if you, as you can, as you can probably imagine, that that's going to be very time-consuming and very expensive for your accountant to do. Uh, and most people haven't done it for, for since they had those investments. So uh, that's one of the main problems we see. We usually advise people to, to stay away from PFIX. Uh, and it's not only mutual funds, but also uh, any pool investment, really, that, that, that a U.S. citizen has outside the United States. Um, another thing that, um, that, we don't, that we do very often, that we see very often, is that uh, many, many Americans don't think about the planning and the, and the, and the cross-border tax issue until they move abroad. Um, so that's also something that we really recommend to, to, to clients or to potential clients to think about those uh, different, different, different problems that U.S. citizens face before they, made, they make that move abroad. Another, another thing, another, another issue that we see very often 
is that um, they they don't think about the retirement location uh, and they start investing uh, in the country that they're living uh, right now or at the moment. Um, they have to try to, if, if they think about retiring in the U.S., um, we always recommend to keep their money in the U.S., to invest in the U.S. And, um, you know, the U.S. also is very efficient, a very low cost. Um, it's the, the, the cost to invest in the United States or any mutual fund or any ETF registered in New York Stock Exchange has the lowest cost. So there's really no reason to, to, to invest um, in, other, in other places if you want to invest in things such as mutual funds or ETFs. Um, and, the, and, and, and another thing that, that we see very often, obviously, is the fact that many, many, many Americans don't, don't file uh, tax returns once they move, move outside the U.S. So um, that's something that we, we encourage them to do, even if they haven't done it. Um, there's something called the, the Offshore Voluntary Disclosure, is the OVD. So even if, even if a U.S. citizen... Um, hasn't been reporting, they can always uh, start doing so and, 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 you know, report all the past income that they haven't reported. So that's the main things that I could think of right now. Um, other than that, I would, um, I would let you go ahead and ask me any questions you may, you may want to ask. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I've yeah. got go uh, ahead. Jesse. Um, so I know we were just talking about taxes. What kind of strategies do you all employ to help uh, your clients lower their tax burden, but at the same time stay tax compliant? Sure. Um, so obviously when you, when you think about a client um, that lives outside the United States, every single situation is different depending on the country they live in. Sure. So um, for example, UK, Switzerland, and Germany, and all those countries have a, a, a tax treaty with the United States that goes back a um, long time. So, and some of them are new, some of them are older. But we look at their specific situation and how the cross-border tax planning relates to that, where they have their money, where they plan to retire, and then we start allocating the money in the different accounts. So uh, I guess if if you want to think about um, if you want to think about someone in Ecuador that's that's planning on retiring and that has a, that's an American citizen that has probably for example half a million dollars, we would um, we would basically open a a brokerage account. Open if it has U.S. income, we would open an IRA or a Roth IRA. We would, and then we would create. Um, and this is a simple example, and we would create an efficient portfolio that is diversified mainly across um, U U.S. asset classes like U.S. large caps, U.S. mid caps, U.S. small caps. We would have uh, European stocks. You would have develop Asia, and that would be the stock category. We also have a bonds, uh, government bonds. We have another category of um, of REITs mm -hmm. and commodities, which is you know commodities and precious metals. And then we would put the different uh, the different investments in the different accounts, depending on where is more tax efficient. So, for example, we would put the the highest growth stocks in the Roth IRA because it won't be taxed until retirement. Mm -hmm. and we would put things such as our government bonds in a brokerage account because um, you know it would it, it wouldn't have such a bigger growth as 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 you want to have some position in the Roth. And then we look at the uh, at the cross border tax issue issue that, that a client has. So for example, if if a client um, to 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 kind of change the location, if a client lives in in Singapore, where they don't pay capital gains, uh, we're going to take advantage of that. If a client has a non-resident alien spouse, uh, they lives in, in Singapore, they can give the stocks and they will pay capital gains. And then, so that's, as you can see, it, can get, it could get very, very complex in details uh, as, as, as the situation changes. 
But then, so that's basically how we start thinking about where, where to allocate our money. Mm-hmm. And we develop a, a cash flow model for the for the future years, and then we ba- rebalance constantly in order to minimize taxes and maximize the, the efficiency of the portfolio for a specific client. Okay, cool. Hey, I just have one more one more question. I'm going to ask, and then I'll turn it over to you. Of course. Um, you know, one other thing that I saw you guys adver- you know, not advertise, but um, recommend to your clients or um, address with your clients is where to maintain banking and investment accounts. Do you all um, advise your clients to diversify their assets offshore at all, or is that, um, or do you incorporate in that, that into the plan based on where the person is living and where they have family and those kinds of things? How does how does that work? So, okay, so that's a very good question. So the one of the things that people uh, usually get get confused about is uh, the, the the currency, uh, the different currencies they're going they're, they're going to place once you move abroad. Mm-hmm. So the thing the thing that really matters is the underlying investments of your portfolio. So if so we work with Schwab because is the is is in my opinion the, the the best when it comes to working with Americans abroad because you know they don't they don't close their doors to Americans abroad. Many broker dealers are just closing their accounts if you're American living abroad because they don't mm-hmm. want to do compliance issues. So, for example, if you if you call me and you tell me you know I want to retire in Germany. And it doesn't make sense for me to have an account in Schwab because I'm going to stay here. I'm going to retire in Germany, so I want to. It, it wouldn't make any sense for me to have a Schwab account. Well, whatever you want to put in the Schwab account, you can buy in the in the German brokerage account. If you want to buy European stocks, you can buy in the Schwab account. If you want to buy European bonds, if you want to buy European corporate bonds, whatever you want to buy, you want, you could buy it in the Schwab account. So it really makes no, no much sense for you to invest in Germany because you could have the same exact investment in a U.S. brokerage account, uh, making sure that, and that, will, that, will, that will guarantee that Schwab will report all your, all your financial situation to the IRS. And the underlying assets are going to be your country of residence. Mm-hmm. So if you live in Germany, you, you tell me, Francisco, I want to retire in Germany, you we, we make sure that your, your, your liability matches your expenses. So when you're 65 years old, your liability is going to be in euros. So it doesn't matter how the dollar, it doesn't really matter that much how the dollar uh, depreciates or appreciates against the euro because your expenses will always be in euros. So we will have a Schwab portfolio, but it will be a, a, a high allocation uh, of the underlying assets in European assets, such as... Right. You know, European or in European currency, right? So that I don't know if that answers your question, but that's that's what we usually do when it comes to that. Yeah, no, absolutely, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I just want to back up for people. I think first of all, I'm psyched to have you. This is um, excellent information for folks listening. I want to back up for a second. So if you're if you're an American, you're you're dealing with FATCA, which is the Foreign Account Tax Compliant Act. You, um, you know, you you move overseas. You're you're potentially earning money outside of the country. I want to um, I want to just give people the basics um, as well. So, what are the basic requirements of FATCA? Um, and then maybe after you answer that, we can get into a couple of questions about maybe some some uh, strategies. But what are the basic just requirements of FATCA if you're an American, either making money overseas or living overseas? Sure. So, um, so the FATCA was uh, basically put into place. Okay. So to, to 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 I guess to back up a little bit. So FATCA was basically created to avoid people that have a lot of money and are not paying taxes. So those people that had accounts in you know in the Cayman Islands or different countries and they never reported. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, when, when they decided to pass all those, those, those laws, that affects mi- middle-class Americans that don't really have uh, 
you know, a lot of money and that increase the amount of uh, complexities and the amount of cost that it takes for the average American to do their taxes. So that's the negative side of FATCA. So when that came into place, there are a lot of accidental Americans that were born in the United States but never lived in the United States. So that created a whole new complex issue for everyone that was American and that was living overseas. Now, when FATCA was put into place, you were required to um, to file form 8966, if I'm not mistaken, every single year. And that goes with the IRS. And then um, you're also um, required to, to, to every year to report your assets with the Treasury Department. Um, and that's basically what you have to do if you're an American abroad every single year. Now, when it comes to people that haven't been compliant in the past, um, the United States also allow people to do offshore voluntary disclosure, OVD, um, but many people didn't do it. Uh, so they can, even if you didn't do it, you could still, I guess, try to, to, to contact an accountant and get, and get, and get working on that. Um, but so that's one thing that, that you have to do if you're an American abroad. Now, what people get confused about a lot is that they, for example, for, they, they, they fill out Form 8966 and they think that they don't have to do anything else, but there's a lot more things that you have to make sure you, you, you do when you're an American abroad. For example, as I said before, you have to make sure the PFIX are reported correctly. Um, for example, you have to... If you make uh, another thing is that if you make less than a hundred thousand a year, you qualify for what's called the um, the foreign earned income exclusion. So anybody that makes less than a hundred thousand a year doesn't pay U.S. taxes, but that does not does that does not mean that you don't file your taxes. So you still have to file your taxes every year and attach form two five 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 if I'm not mistaken, and then. Um, Tell that you know when you attach the form, you say you know, I live in the United States. I make make less than the foreign earned income exclusion. I'm a bona fide resident of the foreign country, and if you're not a bona fide resident, you're gonna pass the presence test, um, and then you can actually uh, apply for the for the for the um, for the foreign earned income exclusion. So it's a, it's a few more things that I guess. Um, that goes into it, but those are the main ones. Uh, and also, I should mention that we do, uh, we're an investment management firm and, a, and we focus on financial planning, and that involves mainly taxes. So, in order to be effective on your investments, you're gonna take a tax into account, but we do not do taxes. So, we're not an accounting firm that does taxes. Uh, we know many accounting firms around the world that does. Uh, that do taxes for you as experts, but we ourselves don't do taxes. So that's something that I should just uh, throw it out there, I guess. <clears throat> Very good. Um, now, let me ask you this then, and I, I think I understand the answer, but I want to clarify for myself and, of course, the listeners. Is it, is it then safe to say that with the passage of FATCA, um, so-called tax havens, and I hate that word because it's super biased, <laughs> but so-called tax havens if you're an American citizen, are at this point um, no longer really viable because you're you're overtly breaking the law at this point. If you were, f were to say, for example, open a corporation in St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, do business wherever you're doing business, you know, even if the income is coming into your St. Kitts and Nevis corporation. Um, as far as the U.S. government is concerned, you have to report all that income and pay taxes on it. Otherwise, you're in breach of, of law. Is that correct? Well, look, what I can tell you is this. I mean, we're not, we're, we're not the tax police, so we really don't. Okay, I can't tell you like an exact amount of what, how, and how, how, how detailed the IRS is when it comes to going after uh, Americans abroad. But what I could tell you is that uh, we always recommend our clients to to report properly. Always do it because it's not it really not worth the risk. If if you were to if you were to get audited by the IRS, um, 
it will be it will be a nightmare if you're a U.S. citizen. It will be extremely costly, and it wouldn't be worth the trouble. So when it comes to 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 we 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 tell clients always we're upfront with them. We will tell them that you know we're not gonna we're not like we don't we're not you you we're not hire, we don't work for the IRS, but we tell them to to try to be compliant and to try to. Uh, to report it as 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 as, as the IRS um, requests, but uh, when it comes to you know the IRS, it's very hard for 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 the IRS to to audit every American abroad. So um, it's something that it's it's a question that comes up very very frequently that um, that that potential clients call and they have never been compliant. So we try to recommend to do OVD if that's the case and to try to make sure that them, their assets or their, the assets that will pass to the kids are, are being taken care of so they don't have to worry about potential tax liabilities in the future. Another thing that they have to think about is when it comes to estate taxes um, to make sure that when it comes to tax treaties, they're also taking account state taxes so the IRS doesn't take a big chunk of your of the money you want to leave to your children so we, we we take care of all that we look at all that when we make a financial plan for a specific individual and uh, we have a couple of lawyers that work in our firm that are very very familiar with the different state planning tax treaties between different countries so so I guess to, to get back to your question we always uh, we I don't know if you can say that those uh, those tax heavens, as people call it, are, are actually have actually disappeared. But we always recommend clients to to be tax compliant and to try to, if they haven't been, try to uh, apply for OVD and do it as soon as possible. Sure, Darnell, you have a question. Um, yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, you know, I mean, we've kind of focused a lot of this on. On um, on clients and financial planning and things, um, something that stuck out to me about your bio was that you had lived in South America, mainly Ecuador. I just wanted to ask you uh, where in Ecuador you lived, uh, and then also where else in South America you're, you've uh, you've lived as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I was born and raised actually in Ecuador. Half of my family lives in Ecuador, and my, the other half lives in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised in the, the north side of Quito. Uh, and I, and I, love the, I love Ecuador. I usually go there once every two years. I would love to retire there. Uh, my dad still lives there. Um, so, yeah, I love Ecuador. I love the, the people and the food. Um, and then besides Ecuador, I, I only travel to different places. I never actually lived outside of Ecuador. I just traveled. Mm -hmm. um, and, yes, yeah, so I mean, I try to you know, follow uh, my, my 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 family tells me a little bit about you know the things that are going on. I saw that the election was a little bit crazy in the last couple of weeks, and you know I've heard that there's um, it's one of the primary retirement destinations for Americans abroad. So I've also been following that, and yeah, very cool. Jesse, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we've covered a lot of what I was looking to cover, um, Francisco. If you have stuff, if you have anything that you know you think our clients should know uh, outside, or not our clients, but the listeners to this show, you know, Americans or otherwise, um, either living abroad, planning to live abroad, or investing abroad. If there's anything you wanna, maybe some, maybe uh, you know, a, a few. Uh, uh, sort of principal points you want to leave people with or anything that you think is worth mentioning that we haven't covered um, You know, why don't we do that and then we'll certainly give you a few minutes to uh, you know Plug your services and let people know how they can get in touch with you um, as well Definitely. So yeah, I can tell you a little bit about you know, the main the main things I can I can think of right now And if you think about the questions you're free to ask but I guess one another thing that I see happening very often is that um Really, people try to. They're 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 very busy and they don't want to deal with financial planning. And that's something that we see very frequently. So they try to you know uh, put it in the back burner and not really take care of it. So we really um, uh, encourage people to 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 do it as soon as possible. And um, 
luckily we're very we get a lot of calls from from Americans abroad on a daily basis and um, our minimum our minimum requirement to become clients is usually half a million dollars but if but if you call our company um, and you have less than the than the requirement than the required amount and you have questions about taxes or questions about your retirement situation or questions about your investments or question about uh, what types of accounts to use to invest for retirement we would definitely talk to you we would, we, won't, we don't charge any money for for we don't, we only charge on uh, a fee of us in our, the assets under management we don't charge any fee for consulting or anything like that and we have um of six other advisors working here so there's always someone that can help and we are more than happy to talk to Americans abroad um, so that's the main thing that we see very often that people don't start working on their uh, on their planning on their financial planning on their future on their estate planning um, and and it's totally understandable I mean that's why you want a financial planner so you don't have to worry about it so you see it so you you make sure someone is looking at it uh, you know looking at it every day making sure you are, your portfolio is balanced making sure you're having you're contributing to the, to the different accounts and whatnot so that's that's one of the things that I would say happens very often uh, regardless of whether whether in the world you live, um, another thing that I see uh, all the time is that um, U.S. citizens sometimes contribute to non-qualified pension plans, um, and that's something that you have to be careful because uh, if you are qualifying, but if you if you are if you are contributing to a pension uh, plan abroad, that could be considered a PFIC. Um, so you gotta be, be be aware of that and making sure you are uh, properly invest you investing properly. Uh, we think that um, we think that you know the United States unfortunately taxes very punitively on, on on the investments abroad. So that's something you have to be um, you have to be aware of. Other than that, um, I would say that. Not understanding really the uh, the different benefits and um, the different benefits that a U.S. citizen has in, in, in the country that they live in, uh, and how they can take advantage of uh, of that and the and the fact that they're U.S. citizens. So even though sometimes you are um, you are even though some people may think that you know being a U.S. citizen is very it's very problematic when it comes to, to, to saving money for retirement. It can also be, be helpful. So, for example, in Ecuador, I know that, um, you know, if you are over 65 years old, they, they give you some of your, 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 tax, uh, your tax back. You pay half price on many things, such as uh, airline tickets and whatnot. Um, you have a income that, that's double the people that are less than 65, if I'm not mistaken, that you can earn before it's taxed. So, and you don't pay any taxes in the United States if you make less than 100,000. So, even though it may sound like uh, the fact that you are a U.S. citizen is a problem, if you if you are retiring and if you don't have too much money saved up and if your income is not very high, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it's a problem. You, I would be. I would say that's the opposite. That's very beneficial for you to move to Ecuador and start taking advantage of retirement and start taking advantage of foreign earning exclusion. Um, so that's another thing that I can think of right now. Um, if you give me a couple of minutes, maybe I can come up with something else. Other than that, I don't know if you have any other questions. Um, also, we we work. Uh, as I said before, we are located in Madison, Wisconsin. We work from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, Central Time USA. Um, we, we're here early in the morning because, as I said before, most of our clients are in Europe. Um, and then, if you if you guys wanna, if you got if anybody wants to contact us, feel free to go to our website and submit a contact request or give us a call. Our phone number is 
237-1318. Um, and I don't know if you guys have more questions or anything else that you guys want to go over. I think, um, Darnell, I think we're good on my end. Uh, if you've got questions, go ahead, or otherwise, uh, shoot us out of here. Okay, great. I think, uh, I think that's all we had for tonight, Francisco. I just want to thank you for joining us and encourage uh, all of our listeners to, uh, to go visit um, Thune Financial's website um, for information and consultation about the best strategies and best way to financially plan your move abroad. Uh, again, um, we're Abundant Living Ecuador, a real estate and relocation services firm based in southern Ecuador. Uh, if you want to reach us, uh, you can do so toll-free from the U.S. and Canada at 888-999-0948 via email at info at abequador.com or visit our website at www.abequador, that's A as in Apple, B as in boy, ecuador.com. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll... I'll uh, catch you guys next week.